Welcome everybody. We're here to explore today the world of the dreadnought, the world of the steel string, the beautiful guitar that has such great volume. And this guitar that you own right now is um, something quite beautiful and something that will be very enduring in quality. Uh, the beauty of this guitar comes from the projection. This is a very loud guitar. It began in 1916 when uh, C.F. Martin Company began to manufacture a dreadnought guitar, kind of like this one. The reason they began with steel strings is because uh, the nylon string guitar didn't have the projection that a steel string guitar has. And, of course, this is quite, kind of a loud instrument, as you can tell. <laughs> And you can strum it, you can pick it, you can use a flat pick, which I'm doing right now. You can also use your fingers, which is a beautiful way to play. And we're going to be exploring all these things with the, uh, the, this beautiful guitar that you have, a steel string guitar. The right posture for the guitar normally, you can put a strap on this, or you can just sit down with your leg up get the guitar kind of horizontal to your body. This is the way you want to do this. Have the guitar, it's easy so your arm can move fluidly up and down the neck in a horizontal way. And the basic posture is what I'm doing right now. I happen to be sitting on a stool with my leg on a uh, footstool. My knee, of course, the guitar is kind of like at the level of the chest level right here. Something that's comfortable for you, but mainly get the guitar horizontal so your hand can move. You hold the guitar, you place your fingers in an arched position underneath. As you can see, your fingers come from underneath the neck to the top, and they actually press. They actually press individually in an arched motion, not a flat motion. You try to keep these fingers arched as much as possible. You want to see this arch in your fingers, in your hand. So make sure you're doing this when you play. Generally, the thumb remains behind the neck. The thumb remains behind the neck like that. The hand comes up at 90 degrees to the guitar neck, and you apply your fingers in a vertical downward positioning, and you get this arch. Very important. Your thumb stays as much as possible behind the neck. That's where you want it. That's the left hand in a nutshell. That's simple. The right hand is a little more tricky because there's a lot more involved. We have a pick and we have fingers. Let's do the pick first. When you're playing a steel string guitar, the pick is important because you can project louder with the pick if you're strumming chords than you can with your fingers. Um, the pick is mainly used for strumming. You can do some flat picking and individual notes as well. You want to try to learn both styles. Both are beautiful. The way you hold the pick basically is you have your thumb. Normally you won't have a thumbnail like I do, but you take that pick and you place it right in the middle of your thumb, a comfortable position. Then you take your index finger and you're going down 90 degrees and then you curve it around a little bit like that. And so the pick is actually an extension of your thumb in a downward flow. And you apply the pick to the strings, go down. And that is basically an easy strum. Okay, the right hand position, this is the position in which you're going to flat pick. You do not brace. If you hear people telling you to brace when you flat pick, it's not advisable. The greatest flat pickers in the world never brace. You hold your flat pick and you don't put your finger down to brace. You can leave this thing floating up on top. You get a beautiful, you get a beautiful amount of mobility that way. Great mobility. If you're locking yourself down, you have a problem. Keep your hand up. Keep the pick flowing over the strings like this as we progress. That's the basic hand form for the pick. Now, for your fingers, the basic hand position is this. Very important. The same as with the classical guitar. In fact, you can play classical music on this guitar as well. The hand comes down at a 90 degree angle to the strings, and the thumb and the fingers do this. You arch them up, 
just like over here. Remember, we arch the left hand, we arch the right hand to form a little bridge. You can see that little bridge in between. My thumb, I'm forming a bridge between the thumb and the fingers. Here's the bridge. So begin the right way and begin with these hand positions. Remember the 90 degree angle, 90 degree angle, keep it arched, keep it arched. You can be much more fluid this way. That's your hand positions. Now, it's very important to understand how the neck works and how the frets work. I'm going to explain this fret to you, what a fret really means. A fret is, a lot of people think the fret is just the little, the little steel bar running across the strings. You see them? There's a lot, of, a lot of steel bars running up and down the neck. That's what gives you your variance of tone. What you have to understand is when I refer to a fret, you want to place your finger not on the steel little bar going across, but the space between the steel bar and the fret before it. And here in this case, the nut, which is the, where the guitar is strung through, and the first fret. This whole thing is called the fret. The second fret is this entire space between the first and the second fret. Here's the second fret. That space is the second fret. This space is the third fret. Here's the fourth fret, the actual metal bar. It, it, it comprises the space behind it as well as the metal bar. When you put your fingers down on the first fret, remember you're putting them there. When you put them on the fourth fret, you put them like this. Very important to remember that it's not just the bar, it's the space behind the bar. Okay, so when you place your fingers, if I say put your finger on the second fret, on the third string, well the first string is the one at the top, all right, and the second string is the next one, the third string, and then the second fret will be right there. The third string, the second fret. So keep in mind that the strings and the frets form a grid pattern, and it's very easy. You just say what string and what fret, you go to that locus point, put your fingers down, and you are making music. Now, it's kind of important to understand the names of the strings and the relation to the frets. So here we go. The lower notes are on the bottom of the guitar. That's the sixth string. Okay, so what you want to do is remember the sixth string is the first one you refer to, then the fifth, the fourth, the third, the second, and then the first string. The strings are named, the sixth is called E, fifth is called A, the fourth string is called D, the third string is called G, the second string is called B, and the first string is another E. It's an octave apart from that E. And what we want to do now <clears throat> is tell you that you have to press these strings into the frets to create the tone, the sound of the music that you want. Uh, if you don't have the strings pressed hard enough and you go to play a chord like this, a D major chord, it sounds like this. When you press them down and you have calluses developed over a couple week period, then it sounds like this. So what your job is at the beginning is to play 45 minutes to an hour a day. In doing so, it, your fingers are going to hurt for the first few days and you're going to create calluses on the tips of your fingers and that will enable you to press down and to be able to play these notes clearly and beautifully, whether they be single notes or chords. Okay, so that's the strings and the frets. Okay, now we're going to begin tuning the guitar. When you tune the instrument, you want to tune these clockwise. Or you're going to tune them going left to right. You always want to tune the guitar left to right. Left to right. So you're going to be tuning like this. You see how my hand's going? Alright, so you tune your guitar that way. Now I'm going to hit the notes. You have to get your strings, you're, they're, you're, when you open your guitar uh, package, your strings are going to be loose and you have to tighten them now. 
So your job at this point is to listen to my note that I play and try to make that string, the first six string down here, the sixth string, equal the sound that I'm making. Take your time, move that machine head, turn it, turn it, turn it. Don't go over, try to tune it to that note. If you go over too much, you'll break the string. Okay, that's six string or E. That note is called E. Keep tuning up. Okay, now, you can refer back to this. Remember, you can refer back. Next, we're going to go to the A string, which is the next string, the fifth string. That's the one in the middle. Tune your string on your guitar to make it sound like this. It's kind of fun, really. Just kind of listen to the sound, move it up, move it down, until you, the A string, or the fifth string, sounds like that. Next, we're going to the fourth string. That's D. Tune your fourth string. It's at the top. You're tuning that now to my tone, which is D. Take your time, tune it up, and always remember, refer back to get the same tone. If you can't get it in tune quick enough, refer back. Alright, that's the D string, or the fourth string. Now we're going to the third string. Third string is called G. That's this one. It's at the top on the other side. Same thing holds true. Remember, turn this way. This way. This way. Alright. So that is G. Kind of tune that string up to there. It's a little longer now. It takes you a little longer to tune it, because the strings are thinner when they're higher. That's your G string, G note on the third or G string. Now we go to the second string, and that's called B. B is the one in the middle, and you want to tune to that. You're going to hear it coming up and up and up. Keep twisting that thing. Keep twisting that machine head until you get this tone. That's B, or the second string. And last but not least is the first string. And the first string is called E again. Tune that string up to this note. Push that machine head clockwise. If you had the clock sitting here, it's going to go this way. Now I'm going to go over each one again. Go back to your sixth string. Slowly match the tone. I'll spend like five seconds on each note. Here we go. Start with the bottom now again. Sixth string. Make it sound like this. The fifth string. Make it sound like this. The fourth string, make it sound like this. The third string, make it sound like this. Second string, make it sound this way. And last but not least, the first string, E, make it sound this way. And the guitar strummed, sounds like this, with no chords, just open. And that's how your guitar sounds too, because I'm playing the same one you are. Such a beautiful instrument this is. Okay, that's tuning your guitar. Refer back to this section many times until your guitar sounds like this.
All right, now we're going to begin to learn to play the guitar. Your guitar should be in tune, and the most important thing now is to learn what to do with your right hand, the different techniques that you need to know for the right hand. Now with the pick, the best technique I can tell you to play is to strum with the pick. At the beginning, you want to just strum, strum, and strum some more. So the first thing you want to do is strum. So the easiest way to do that is you hold the pick like I told you before and you strum down. Now a lot of people at the beginning strum down and hit the first string on the way back. They kind of skim the first string. So watch how the pick goes. Down. doesn't sound like much until you start playing chords. As soon as you do that, watch. So that's the technique for the pick. Now, that's the strumming technique. In addition to that, you can pick individual notes out with your pick. For instance, those are the first three notes to Wildwood Flower, which we'll learn in a few minutes. But I'm holding a chord and I'm just taking the pick and I'm resting it on the next string. You see that? I'm taking the pick, placing it on the fifth string, plucking it. I'm resting on the fourth string, ready to play. I pluck the fourth string. Then I pluck the third string. And that is a picking technique. Now the other picking technique that you learn after you get going and after you get good is picking up and down tech strokes to, in order to play quick individual notes. And the best way and the best exercise for doing that, of course, is to pick individual notes up and down with the pick. So you go to the first string, this is the best exercise for this, and you go down and up. Just get used to it. Down, up, down, up. That's all I'm doing is I'm taking the pick, I'm hitting the first string down, and the first string up. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up. And, okay. All right, now, the best way to begin to use your left hand is begin to play this exercise, and you can use this with your pick and with your fingers. It's a great exercise. It's a chromatic scale that you really need to learn to play, and it gives you your best opportunity to learn to use your pick and combine them with your fingers. So here's how it works. This is your exercise for right hand technique with a pick. You pluck the first string. We're only going to be on the first string first string, then you put your finger on the first string first fret. Remember what I told you, first in between on the space. So you went down, open, put it on, come up. Down, put the next finger on the second fret. Come up, put your finger on the third fret. Go down, put your finger on the fourth fret. Okay, so what I just did was this, down, up, down, up, down. You see that? Down, up, down, up, down. This is the technique that you want to use on the guitar to learn to play with your plectrum or your pick and you're going to be alternating your strokes. You have to learn to put your fingers on this chromatic scale and learn to play all the way up the neck then down. Very, very important scale and one that I want you to learn right now with me. I'm going to play it slowly for you. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. And we end it there on the 12th fret where your two little white dots are. So what I just did is I went Keep your fingers in line. Now I'm alternating every pick stroke, down, up, down, up, down, up. I'm going to do it again. And this is what you must practice. Don't do it two times the same way. It does not accomplish anything. What you want to accomplish is, is exactness and, and clarity of your stroke by going down, up, down, up, down, up. Do it slow. 
keep your hand elevated above the guitar. And then you come down. Here's the tough part. You've got to take your time with this. And when you're descending, you have to go like this. It's and then when you put your, all four fingers move and you go to the next to the next four frets down until you are down here. It's a little tricky, so I'm going to show you how to do that again. You come up and now you come down. All four fingers move. Do you see that? You can do it again. Don't go like this. Bad habit. You don't accomplish very much doing that. You want to have good posture, good hand position when you're playing and learning to play with your pick. So now I'm going to show you this chromatic exercise again. Slowly, diligently do the same thing as me. That's exactly what I want you to do. Putting the pick down, we are now going to tell you the technique for the right hand and how to pluck the strings. Because you're learning both techniques when you learn the steel string guitar. Very versatile instrument. As I told you before, with the right hand, the thumb is right like that, this arch, and then you assign a string to each finger. These fingers have an actual string that they call home. So example, the thumb, it doesn't have really a home because it varies and jumps around from the sixth to the fifth to the fourth string. But these three fingers definitely have a home. The first finger or index finger usually rests on the third string. Put it on there and leave it there. The second finger, the index finger, the big finger, put that on the second string right beside the little, I mean right beside your index finger right beside your index finger. And your ring finger, you place that on the first string. So you have the first, second, and third strings with your fingers resting on them. Leave them there, take your thumb, leave it in this position, pluck at the sixth string, and then pluck the third string with your first finger, pluck the second string, pluck the, third, the first string. So here we go. Six, three, two, one. Six, three, two, one. Six, three, two, one. Six, three, two, one. That's your basic arpeggio for the right hand. And you're going to be using these techniques as you progress through this lesson and in lessons to come. Now I'm changing the bass strings with my thumb, but the other fingers are staying the same. You add a chord. Okay, that's the right hand technique. First chord that you're going to learn today, uh, a progressive series of chords. The first one is called E major. E major chord, here's what you do. Watch my fingerboard, watch my fingers. You're taking your first finger, you're placing it on the third string, first fret. Remember the frets, remember the strings. Third string, first fret. You're taking your second finger and placing it on the fifth string, second fret. Just a grid pattern, very easy. You're placing your third finger on the fourth string second fret. And so what you have is you have that look. That's exactly the E major chord. You strum it with... There's your E major. I was strumming that with my thumb. If you want, you can strum it with your pick. Either way. Yours might sound like this. And buzz because you, you're not pressing it down hard enough. Well, you need to get those calluses so you can press down. That's your E major chord. Now, you've got to learn another chord now. That's your first one. We're going to learn A minor next. And all you do, it's the same as the E major chord. You just drop everything down one string. You see what I just did? That's A minor. Listen to this beautiful chord. 
back to E major. You just drop everything up one string. We raise everything up a string. There's your back to your E major again. So, I'm going to explain the A minor chord individually right now so you really understand it in case you didn't get the part about dropping down. The A minor chord, you take your first finger, you place it on the second string first fret. You take your second finger and you place it on the fourth string second fret. You take your third finger and you place it on the third string second fret. There's your A minor chord. That's E major dropped right down one string. So now what you want to do is practice these. You must practice these two chords and change them. The way you practice chords is very simple. You practice your chords by strumming them four times each. One, two, three, four, and then change it. And your job is to make these chords flow smoothly as you change them back and forth. For you, it's going to be like this at the beginning. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. And that's okay. Soon, within a week or so, you'll be able to go All I'm doing is strumming down with my pick. If you want to, strum up too. Go like this. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. When I come back up, I'm hitting the first string and maybe just grazing the second string. I'm not aiming at all. I just bring it back. Whatever it hits, it hits. A very relaxed thing to do. Get those chords down. Get them good. And now we're going to learn a piece of music. What we're going to show you right now is using those two chords, we're going to play the beginning section of Malagueña Rumba, uh, a tune that is a very exciting song. The basis for it is Malagueña, which is a flamenco tune from the 1800s. And so, here's how it goes. You play your E major chord. Very simple. I'm going to teach it first with a pick to you, so pay close attention. Then I'll teach it to you with your fingers. You can play it both ways. The pick way to do it is simple. You just hold the E major chord, you pluck the fourth string with your pick. And then you pluck the first string with your pick coming up. So it's... And then you pluck the third string with your pick going down. And then you pluck the first string coming up. So far we have fourth string going down, first string coming up, third string going down, first string coming up. Second string now goes down. First string comes up. So here's what we got so far, folks. Four, one, three, one, two, one. Four, one, three, one, two, one, four. Got that? You're not playing the fifth string at all, even though you're holding it down, it's okay, it's part of the chord, leave it there, then we change the chord. We go to your A minor chord, and this is kind of fun because you have to make it do a little chord alteration. What you do, you get to the A minor chord, just move it to the A minor chord and play three down, up on one, play two down, up on one, take your finger off the first fret of the second string, Play it the second string open. Okay? Good. So thus far in the A minor chord we have play three, third string down, first string up, second string down, first string up. Take your finger off the second string, play it open. Good. When you get to the A minor chord, it's three, play up, second string, play up on the first. Open on the second string, go to the third string, take your finger off the third string and play the note open. Got that? Okay, so the A minor chord so far now. That's what we got so far. One other note, you got to reach up, you're going to go back to the E chord, but before you go, 
you got to have to put the third finger on the fourth string third fret and then you slide back to the E major chord like we just did at the beginning so the whole thing slowly it's not difficult this is a beautiful song one that you can learn variations on listen to my albums I have many variations on this basic thing here we go Malaganya basic melody basic melody with Malaganya with a pick. Now you want to practice that over and over and now I'm going to show you the same thing with your fingers. <clears throat> Put your E major chord down, same as before, begin with the fourth string. Now remember <clears throat> your fourth string is played with the thumb. Don't worry that you're not playing the fifth string, it's part of the chord, it's fine. Play your fourth string with your thumb first string with your index finger. So we'll just keep the index finger on the first string for this time because it's just plain easier to do than to use your third finger. So here we go. Four, one, then take your thumb, play the third string. Play the second string with your thumb and put that little first string in there in between. Got that? That's with E major. Do it twice. Now you change the A minor chord. Remember, drop one string down. Play your third string with your thumb. Play your first string. Then play your second string with your thumb. Take the finger off. Play it open. Play the third string with your thumb. Take the third string off. Reach over with the third finger to the fourth string third fret. Play it. Back to the E major chord. The trickiest part of this is the A minor chord. The A minor chord goes like this. Remember. The whole thing together, you want to practice this slowly, come back, you know, rewind your tape, listen to it again and again until you've got it down like this. Okay, that is the beginning of Malaganya. Next we're going to play Green Sleeves. Green Sleeves is an old Celtic tune that dates way, way back into time, a thousand years ago. And we're going to use the same chords we did last time, but we have to add a new chord. That's called G. So let's do that chord right now. You already know E. Already know A minor, and now here's G. G, you take the first finger, place it on the fifth string second fret, take your second finger, place it on the sixth string third fret, and then you stretch your third finger down to the first string third fret. Got that? Press down. Now, what you want to practice with your picker, with your fingers, it doesn't matter, is again, is when you practice these chords, change them. Let's start with the A minor this time. Go to the G. Go to the A minor. Go to the E major. Over and over. This is what I want you to practice now. Before you can play green sleeve, you must be able to do this. A minor. A minor, E major, A minor, play with me, G, A minor, E major. Get those chords perfect. Practice, get those calluses, make that beautiful tone on this beautiful guitar. Now, we're going to play green sleeves. Grab your A minor chord. We're going to pluck the, the third string. Then you're going to strum all the way down 
except you don't want to play the first string. You want to stop it at the second string. So it's again. Good. We're holding A minor. Watch my chord. This is very easy now. We're going to alter the chord by adding a note. Put your fourth finger on D, which is the second string third fret. You see that? And you're going to play that as an individual note. So, so far you play, put it down, and then strum again all the way down. So it goes. Got that? I want you to play it exactly like that. Now that's the first section. Now the second section is you have to a little two little passing tones. All you do is you take your first finger, play the first string, first fret, and then play it open. Got it? Okay, this is not difficult. Got it? Now, that's section A for green sleeves. Now section B, we have to change chords. We want to G. Our normal G chord is with the third finger on the first string third fret, but in green sleeves we have to move it in order to play the melody. So we move it to the next string down, the second string third fret. And you strum all the notes, and you end on the second string third fret, this one right there. So now I'm going to show you this again. There's the normal G. For green sleeves we have to move it to there, the second string third fret, and you play the notes. And don't play the first string. Just play uh, end this at the second string. So so far in A minor. Here we go. That's what you've got so far. Just very pretty. So that's your G chord. That's an altered G chord. It's a G with a D on top. So you've got that. And then the next two notes are open, you take that D off of there, and you just play that second string open, and then you play the third string open. So in G, here's how you play the G. Okay, so we're starting with the A minor, section one, and we're going to go to section two now, the G chord, green sleeves. You hear that? Very beautiful on the guitar. The steel string guitar is made for this kind of music. Got it? I want you to play that over and over again. Refer back to this tape and until you can play section one. And section two, the G chord, just like that. All right, now as soon as you can do that, we go to the next chord. We're going back to A minor again. And all you do, you're holding the G, you play the third string second fret, and then you play the second string open. Then you go to your A minor chord, and you end on the second string. Strum them down, end on your second string. Remember, you, your G chord that you went to, you want to now play these two notes. Okay, so here we go. Section one. Refreshing your minds. So we just changed and we went back to the A minor chord. Now listen to it again from the top. Got it? That's the way it should sound. Make it sound like that. Now we're going to continue. All you do then is you hit the 4th string 2nd fret with your pick and you strum down to the 4th string 2nd fret. End it there. Okay, so here we go. From the beginning now, very slow. Got it? Then what you do, we're almost done, is you Keep your A minor chord, you pick up your third finger, you play the first finger on the third string first fret, and then you come back again. 
to the second fret on the third string. Then you go to E major. So you just play down to the second string, and third string, fourth string, holding the E major chord like we learned. Now here's the whole song slowly. Okay, green sleeves. That's how much I'm going to show you right there. I want you to learn this, learn it so it flows like water. Let me do it again. That's the beginning phrase of green, of, of green sleeves. It's gorgeous. Once you get that, the, the rest of this whole phrase is simple. It just repeats. It just repeats. And all you do, on the second part, when you play this A section, then all you do is repeat exactly from the beginning. there. And then you repeat these two notes again. And here's the only part that changes. Go to the A minor and then play it open. Go to the E major. And this is tough. You have to learn to do this anyway, so might as well start now. You have to reach with your fourth finger while you're holding that E major chord and grab the note F sharp on the fourth string, fourth fret. Hit it once and then hit the third string and end with A minor. So here's how that part goes. Do you see that? It's a little tricky because you have to grab that E major chord and you're grabbing that fourth string with the little finger. And then you end on the tonic. A minor. This is in the key of A minor, this song, a beautiful, beautiful tune called Green Sleeves. Work this up, work it up slowly and methodically. Remember, we're using altered chords. You take the chords, you take a finger off, put it on. That's the way you make the melody. I'm going to play it one time through, then it's up to you. The next chord you've got to learn in order to play Wildwood Flower with your flat pick is C major. C major is a very important chord. You take your first finger, you place it on the second string first fret. You take your second finger and you place it on the fourth string second fret. You take your third finger, you've got to stretch it now, learn to stretch these fingers. It takes a little practice, place it on the fifth string third fret. That's C major. Usually you don't play the sixth string. You just do that. Okay, that's C. Very important. We've got to learn that one, folks. You've really got to practice this one. Now, the next one is G7. G7, take your first finger, place it on the first string first fret. Take your second finger and place it on the fifth string second fret. Take your third finger and place it on the sixth string third fret. This is G7. It sounds like this. So the C chord, you've got to practice four times each. Practice these chords. I'm doing with my strum. Down, up, that's all I'm doing. Just 
strumming. Get those chords down. Once you have those chords down, come back here and we'll do Wildwood Flower. Now we're going to play a country tune, one of the great root songs of America called Wildwood Flower. Grab the C chord, put it in this position, take your flat pick. This is a flat picker's tune. Play a note, the fifth string, just pluck it. Pluck the fourth string. Pluck the third string. Okay, that's pretty easy. Then what you want to do is go down up on the first two strings. Don't aim it, feel it. Got that? That's in C major now. Okay, now we've got to do a little altered chord to the C major. What we do is you take your second finger that happens to be sitting on the fourth string second fret, you move it over, and we're going to do something on the third string second fret. And I'm going to show you what that is. Now you hear that thing I just did there? It's called a hammer-on. It's one of the cool moves in playing country uh, roots music. And all you do is you play the third string open, and then you smack your finger down on the chord, on the fret. Watch. I'm only playing one, and I'm hammering it on. This third string second fret. So that's what you got to do. So we start it. After you get that part down, then all you do is... Then you take your finger off, play the G string open, the third string open. Put your finger back into the C chord, and you just play the third string and the fourth string. So we're going to take that section A, this is called. You go down, up again. Here we go. Remember, you put a down up stroke after you come back to that C chord. So one more time, real slow. Fifth, fourth, third, down up, hammer on the, the, uh, fourth, the third string second fret, hammer on the third string second fret by moving your finger from the fourth string second fret to the third string second fret. Keep it up in the air, play the G note open, then play it open, G, put it back in C play the fourth string second fret. So it goes like this. Got that? Here we go. Very easy. We're only holding one chord here. Now the next part, the section B, is you have to alter the chord by using your little finger and putting it on the fourth string third fret. Play it and then play the fourth string second fret. So here we go. Got that? That's all it is for the C chord, that much. You practice right with me. Okay, then we're going to go to the G seventh chord and you play the fourth string open. Go down up. See what I just did? Hit the fourth string open, down up. Now here's a tricky thing you got to do. It's an altered chord from the G seventh. You move your second finger. You're going to hammer on the fourth string second fret. Hit it open, hammer it on. Take it off. Play the open string. Back to C. Okay. Here's the G seventh part now. All you're doing in G7th is G7th part. All right, so now let's take it from the top real slow. 
So it sounds like this. Take your time, play right along with me. That's it. Uh, this is the culmination of all the songs we've learned. We kind of learned Malaganya, we learned a little bit of Green Sleeves, we learned the first part of Wildwood Flower. Now we're going to go House of the Rising Sun, one of the great American folk tunes of all time. And we're going to have to play a couple extra chords in here. And I'm going to show you what they are. And then we put them all together. And House of the Rising Sun has the chords from all the songs that we've just played. So here we go. The first chord you want to learn is called D major, and it goes like this. Take your first finger, put it on the third string, second fret. Take your second finger, put it on the first string, second fret. Take your third finger, put it on the second string, third fret. Get that old thumb underneath the neck, like that. Don't keep bringing it up there. Don't put it under where it should be. Play that chord, starting with the fourth string down. Don't even bother playing the fifth or the sixth string. After a while, you'll just be able to go. You'll be able to play it, no problem. That is called D major, D. Got it? Practice D, practice it a lot. And then the hardest one that you're going to play is called F. F is a little tricky, and might as well jump into this because if you can't play F, you can't play a lot of songs in the key of C and a lot of songs are in the key of C. Now F is you have to take your first finger, flatten it over the second and the first strings on the first fret. You gotta flatten that puppy down. Then you take your second finger and you place it on the third string second fret and you take your third finger and you place it on the fourth string third fret. This takes a lot of practice to get this one down. Your thumb is right under, is right under your index finger, pressing down, trying to keep these two notes sounding like this. Then you add this note and that one. And that's the F chord. So now your job, here we go, your job is to play D. thumb under there, keep it under, D and F. And then you practice all your chords in this progression. I'm going to, now follow me very closely on this. This is fun. This is all the chords we've learned in this video. Here we go. We start with the A minor. Four times. Play the C. Play the D. Play the F, play A minor, play the C, play the E. So that's the progression you want to learn. You want to be able to play this progression smoothly, going down up with your pick. got to practice and get that progression perfect before you can play House of the Rising Sun. And keep practicing that over and over again so you can make those chords change fluidly right along with me. Okay, now we're going to start off in the A minor chord. Now you know that by now. And here's how we do it. A minor, take your flat pick, hit the fourth string, hit the fifth string. And then you do an arpeggio. Hit the third string, down, second string down, First string up. Got that? 
and then the second string up. So the arpeggio is three down, two down, one up, two up. Got that? Bass notes. Did you hear that? That's exactly the way it should be. Bass, bass, through three, two, one, two. Okay, that's your first chord. Now we go to an altered chord. Play the A minor, play the A note open, go to your C on the fifth string. So you play fifth string open, fifth string third fret. Do the same arpeggio. So here we go, the first two chords in House of the Rising Sun are... Got it? Okay. Now, hold the C chord, play the fourth string. Go to the D chord, play the fourth string. Do your arpeggio. So you went to the C chord, you played the fourth string, you went to D, the fourth string then went open. Arpeggio. Okay, so now we have something pretty cool going on. A minor. Again. Now, after the D chord, we're going to go to F, and what you do is you play the open D string, and then you grab your F chord on the 4th string 3rd fret. So here's how it sounds from D. And you got to press down that F chord to get this. A minor slow, play with me from the top. Just like that, we're using your flat pick. You want to play that over and over again. Come back to that section. You want to play then the fourth string third fret in F. You want to shift back to A minor and play the fourth string second fret. Do your arpeggio. So we've got from F now to A minor from the beginning. Just like that. Now we get to the next chord. We're almost finished with this. You play, you're still in A minor. You play the fifth string open and you add the C chord, the fifth string third fret. Do your arpeggio. Okay, got that? From the beginning, we're going to play it all the way to there. Hit the 5th string 3rd fret in C, go to your E major chord, hit the 5th string 2nd fret and do the arpeggio. And do a strum. That's House of the Rising Sun. I'm going to play it for you one more time with the pick, then I'm switching to the fingers. That's so beautiful with the flat pick. There's all kinds of cool things to do with that, but that's the basic. Now watch with your fingers. It's the same exact thing. Each finger gets a string, like I told you before. The third finger gets the first string. The second finger gets the second string. And the first finger gets the third string. And then all you do, you play the same notes, the same chords. Watch. Here's your fingers. Now watch how beautiful this sounds. A lot mellower, very sweet. Isn't that beautiful?
so that's the way you play with your with your actual fingers of your right hand and your thumb not using the flat pick and it's exactly the same format as the flat pick the only difference is you substitute your thumb for what the flat pick did on the bottom and then instead of doing that arpeggio with the flat pick you just use three two one two so it's three two one two three two one two three two one two all right so you get some idea of what i'm talking about now and that is such a beautiful song and i want you to practice these chords till they're smooth as glass you'll enjoy playing these four songs so as i leave you today i'm going to play house of the rising sun just with a flat pick and do some strumming and have some fun with it enjoy this folks and we'll see you next time here we go <laughs>